Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today we'll be looking at some doubles pro gameplay on the map Rail. Now to my knowledge, Rail is only available in Team Doubles and in the Mini Slayer variant. Now, I am with my teammate Portal Hopper. His tag is Duck. We're against Legit Mama Kitty and a bag of Pepsi. On this map, I want to point out that Overshield does spawn below the teleporter exit. Overshield spawns here. Teleporter exit is here. Teleporter entrance is there. And as you can see from our spawn point off to the right is the sniper rifle. Now why are we going both going for the overshield after the beginning of the game? The reason why is overshield is extremely important. If you grab overshield it's almost a guaranteed kill on this map. The map is so small and so round that it really, really depends upon you grabbing that overshield. There's a lot of escape routes by just simply dropping bottom middle and running around. Dropping, Going up the two lifts on either side is also a decent escape route. Throwing a grenade up isn't an option. Bouncing off the lift because it will go through the shield. So anyway, let's get right to the gameplay. At the spawn here, Portal Hopper and I both go for the overshield. I end up picking it up. And as you can see, this is... The enemy team's idea as well as we end up killing both enemy players off the spawn. Now don't let that confuse you, the enemy players are very very decent as they are already on our sniper and have gotten me one shot already. Now right here I'm just trying to regenerate my shields. Duck dropped down here, we didn't expect the player to push up like he did. I end up waiting for him to drop but he doesn't. There's at least several other times where they don't pursue the kill. Duck cleans up both of those kills. Very good job on his part. Now I would like to say here and point out that there are so many flanking routes it is unbelievable. So right here, you get that guy right here who forced me to retreat up this ramp. If his teammate had been waiting for me right up here, that would have been an ultimate flank maneuver and that's what you're going to see Duck and I do several times and you'll also see that strategy used against us. Duck has a sniper rifle. I end up backing up and I let my teammate get the kill. But unfortunately, the enemy player comes behind us. And this is a consistent issue with this map. Is it's very, very hard to predict where the enemy is going to spawn or be at any given moment. Put a few decent shots into this player. And you're probably wondering, how did my teammate kill him? Well, he's right behind me. You want to be together almost always in doubles unless you're at a different flanking route. For example, later on in the film, you'll see my teammate Duck provide support fire from over here, because he can be over here and look through this window and see the enemy players. Providing support fire from this angle is fine. As long as you're with your teammate or at a separate angle providing support fire, that's all that's really required. Backing down, letting my shield recharge. I throw an aid. I do not get a hit marker, so I let my teammate know that via my callouts. Now, this is a confusing, again, the same enemy player comes up behind us. He came up behind us, threw a nade, killed my teammate, but did not back away fast enough to actually get the kill. Uh, try to let my teammate finish it off. I call it that overshield is uh, up, but unfortunately, just botting shotting that guy means that he will run straight back to the overshield, and they will have that overshield. The enemy player does a great job of flanking around the map, again, surprising me and taking me off guard. We are two kills ahead, currently two kills ahead of the enemy team. I want to mention here that I tried to allow Portal Hopper to understand exactly the flanking routes that you can have on this map. It really is frustrating to newcomers, um, and he got it more halfway through the game. Not necessarily at the beginning. As you can see, he tries to do it there by jumping off and flanking. But right now, the reason why I'm hiding is because they have an overshield. I'm waiting for that overshield to burn off. The more seconds I wait, the more that overshield burns off and he's not able to use it. I gotta pick up one guy. Great bait and switch there by Duck as he puts a few shots on the enemy players and then ducks behind that column you see in the center of the map. He puts a few shots on enemy players, ducks behind that column, and I'm able to finish up the kill and we get a free kill, basically. Now, Duck doesn't hang back like I do. Now, notice what Duck did. He didn't come back here around the corner. 
I do, and as you see, the enemy player doesn't necessarily notice me. Sniper rifles up. Am I going to run straight for it? Absolutely not, because I know the enemy team is going to sprint down from their ramp on that side. They're going to sprint down from right here, and I'm going to sprint to the sniper rifle. So what I'm doing here is flanking with my teammate up here. They think that's where we are, because that's where we just got killed and died from. Right here, they're never going to expect me. Again, flanking routes on this map are absolutely critical. Put a bunch of really solid shots into that guy. Don't realize that guy's there until a little too late. And then my teammate is able to come in and suppress him a little bit more. He... Again, great flanking by the enemy team. Uh, a player right here and right there. Great job doing that. Off the spawn here, I'm going to try to regroup with my teammate. But I see an enemy player here, and I also see the overshield. I'm not sure why I don't try to get that fifth shot there. Um, my teammate does call out to me that he does have an overshield. So I'm going to hang back here and let my shields regenerate. However, this guy's already weak. So I'm going to hold here. Right here is probably one of the most underrated spots to hide on this map. Notice how it's actually a little corner. This is great to hide behind. You can also crouch jump on top of here crouching at the top of your jump to make it on top of this barrier. It's very hard to nade unless you know how. Specifically, you have to nade this point right here on the map. Okay, This is actually a flat wall, or considered a flat wall in the game, even though it seems to be angled. If you just bounce a grenade off this surface right here really hard, you will get about around right here, which will clean up an enemy player like myself hiding right here. The enemy team doesn't seem to know that, however, as they will throw multiple nades at me throughout this game. I toss a pre-nade thinking that he should have come after me. That enemy player definitely should have pursued that kill. He should have attacked me. I do get the hit marker, so I let my teammate know, hey, he's really, really weak. I'm going to go up through the portal again to try to tie to flank here. I should have looked more to the right here. I'm not sure why I stay in this corner. Um, I should have definitely pushed out before then. This is probably one of my major mistakes in the game, I would say. Upon further review of the film, that actually was not a mistake I was making right here. I'm actually waiting on my teammate, who just died really far away from me, to spawn on me. You never want to push if your teammate is dead. And since the enemy recognized that I was hiding behind this barrier, and I don't have his support, I'm trying to stay alive and wait till he spawns. And as you can see, just to the left here briefly, as I've moved my screen to the left, as we come out of the pause, he will be right there providing excellent cover fire from that balcony that I mentioned earlier in the video. Just wanted to pause and let you guys know that. Was not doing anything. Notice how the person did not angle the grenade properly, so it did not kill me. Wait for my teammate to put some shots in him, and then back up. Portal Hopper trying his best to stay alive, but ends up giving away that kill. I also end up dying as well. So the enemy team, I believe, has tied our score. I just saw them both go through the teleporter on my death screen. He's going to throw a grenade, and I throw the second grenade. Not sure how that didn't kill him, and he's going to die. I quickly back down, go through the bottom, and try to escape bottom middle. See the escape routes that you're able to achieve? It's just unbelievable. You really have to know the map inside and out. I get here, and I... My teammate ends up getting the kill. Really good job of the enemy player meleeing me and then killing me. Even though my duck, my teammate, will clean him up. Really good job of just going in and make, going for the melee. That's what you technically should do when people try to, try to grab the overshield. Is to get close and melee them or stick them. End up getting a really good double kill. Really protecting my teammate. Even though he has an overshield, we end up gaining the lead by two more kills. I keep thinking that that lift sound you're hearing is... An enemy player, but it so happens not to be. Notice how I threw that grenade almost at this wall, and that's either down or below. Somewhere up here is where you want to throw that to angle it off to try to kill the guys behind. Unfortunately, it ricocheted back and didn't actually make it. Notice how he still didn't angle the grenade off the wall. See how I was able to get up on top of the barrier for a brief second there? They throw I don't know how many nades at me during this time. We don't have radar, which is a typical of doubles pro. End up giving this guy a really nice five shot. I think I'm a I'm actually 
almost get cleaned up here. Going with the teleporter, they seem to never expect it. They always are um, up here because these are the power positions of the map. That's why rail is so absolutely unpredictable is because these are the power positions of the map. Up here, up here, and up here. But if someone goes to the teleporter, you're immediately spawning or so-called spawning behind them. So you can see all three of those positions. It makes it very unpredictable. I'd say Rail was really brutal to me the first few games I played, to say the very least. Calling out the two enemy players, I see them. I'm going to hide behind this barrier once again. I see the overshield, and the enemy player is going to do a great job of running in and meleeing me. I got two melees from two players there. I don't know why my teammate drops and ends up giving them that kill. I don't know why that is. He should have hidden. And you'll notice me hanging back here. Why am I doing that? Because I just heard the lift with my Astros, my Astro headset. And so I'm going to wait to hurl that grenade and, and fortunately enough I hit almost both of my nades. I don't try to continue that kill because I don't know how much overshield he has left. So I'm going to hang back and survive. Great grenade by my team teammate right there. Grenades are critical on rail. Rail reminds me of Simplex when it comes to grenades. It really, really... And see, right here... This is hilarious, actually. I just wanted to briefly show you guys this. Actually, never mind. I don't know why I was calling that out. But again, a very great job of flanking by the enemy team. i try to clean up this kill. As you can see, though, to my right, as I come off the spawn... Look where the enemy player, look to the right. See how the enemy player dropped? But I can't see that because my gun is in the way. You see? It's very interesting how you approach that wall. And I keep getting confused because I thought, okay, you know, that's where he's going to be. All right, where is he? Well, he must have dropped. And I eventually figure that out. Turn towards the teleporter, and there he does, comes out. And I end up mailing him twice. Probably should have died there. But I end up surviving. We're three kills ahead of the enemy team. We need six more kills to win. It's 30 kills to win, so let's see what we can do here. Excellent job of baiting and switching by my teammate. I end up dying with a much better nade on the enemy's part to get behind that cover. The overshield is up, and they're very likely going to grab that. There's not a whole lot we can do. So we're going to stay up here. We're going to pot shot them from the top. Just give them a few good shots to weaken their shields a little bit. Hang back. I hear him lift up. I toss a nade, and he ends up completely backing down um, for the most part there. Good job on my teammate's part getting both of the kills there. Really good snipe here on my part as I find the second guy via my teammate's call out and give him the double kill. Almost grab a really cool no scope here. End up sniping him in the body and almost finishing with the pistol, but don't quite make it. And I believe my teammate or I team shoot him for the final kill. Team shooting and flanking on this map is absolutely critical. So guys, I hope this gameplay helped you understand a little bit more how to play rail in team doubles. If you like this gameplay or anything else that I provide, like the video, subscribe for more Halo content, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Thanks, guys.